This question will deal with the reacquisition of shares. Potter Inc. has 52,000 common shares outstanding. The shares have an average cost of $21 per share. On July 1, 2020, Potter reacquired 800 shares at $56 per share and retired them. Assume no contributed surplus balance exists from previous share repurchases. Prepare the journal entries to record this transaction if Potter prepares financial statements in accordance with ASPE. Discuss how the answer to Part A might be different if Potter prepared financial statements in accordance with IFRS. Okay, so let's see what do we know here. So we know that Potter retired 52,000. So Potter has 52,000. The shares have an average cost of $21 per share. And Potter is going to reacquire 800 shares at $56 per share. So our cost for 800 shares, based on the average $21 per share, is going to give us $16,800. But Potter retired 800 shares for, this was our average cost. So this is our cost and he retired them at $56 per share. Ooh, that's pretty hefty, times 800. So they, he paid $44,800, or 800, sorry, those are two zeros, $800. <clears throat> okay, so this is what he paid. Okay, so the difference between what he paid and what the shares were valued at on our balance sheet or our statement of financial position is going to be 44,800 minus 16,800. So our difference here is going to be $28,000. So we paid $28,000 more than the shares were valued on our balance sheet, meaning in some sense it's a loss, although we don't account for it that way. So the journal entry to record this is we're going to need, so these are common shares. So we're gonna to need to remove the common share value uh, of the cost. So we're gonna go debit common shares. It's important to note that he also is gonna retire them. So these shares, he's purchasing them to retire them. So that's why we're gonna take out the, the capital that we have in our balance sheet related to these shares, which is this 16,800. We're gonna credit cash because he actually repurchased the shares for $44,800. And then what's our balancing entry here? Well, first we would hit contributed surplus if we had ever put anything into contributed surplus related to these common shares. But the question specifically says, assume no contributed ba surplus balance exists from previous share repurchases. So we don't have contributed surplus, then the remaining debit is gonna go to our retained earnings. So we're actually gonna be taking money out of our retained earnings to repurchase these chair shares. So we're decreasing our retained earnings because retained earnings of course has a credit balance. So that is going to be our $28,000 here. The next part of this question asks, so this is in accordance with ASPE. So how would it be different if we were accounting for this repurchase um, in accordance with IFRS? And the answer is under IFRS, even though less guidance is provided for the reacquisition of shares, the same principles apply. Meaning that the accounting wouldn't be any different. We're just using the conceptual framework to determine how we would account for these shares. It's not as specific guidance um, as is provided by ASPE, but you're gonna get to the same place. So we wouldn't account expect the accounting to be any different. So it's a little bit of a trick question because normally we're thinking that we need to compute something or have a different journal entry between IFRS and ASPE, especially when questions are asking us that. But in terms of share, repurchases and reacquisitions, there's no substantial difference in the accounting. 
The only difference is that ASPE provides more explicit guidance and IFRS doesn't provide as explicit guidance with respect to the accounting for the reacquisition of shares, but the conceptual framework will get us to the same basic principles.